Welcome to the 2023 Indiana DMV written test. This test has 60 questions with explained answers to help you prepare for this test. Before we get started, don't forget to jumpstart that like button to keep this channel running. Now here is your DMV instructor to walk you through the questions. Question one, what is the purpose of a crosswalk? A, to mark the boundary of a bicycle lane. B, to indicate the presence of a pedestrian crossing. C, to designate a lane for emergency vehicles. D, to separate opposing lanes of traffic. The correct answer is B, to indicate the presence of a pedestrian crossing. The purpose of a crosswalk is to indicate the presence of a pedestrian crossing. Crosswalks are marked areas on the road where pedestrians have the right of way when crossing the street. Drivers should always yield to pedestrians in a crosswalk and exercise caution to ensure their safety. Question two, what should you do if you encounter a flashing red traffic signal? A, proceed through the intersection without stopping. B, treat it as a stop sign and come to a complete stop. C, maintain your speed and proceed with caution. D, slow down and be prepared to yield if necessary. The correct answer is B. Treat it as a stop sign and come to a complete stop. When encountering a flashing red traffic signal, drivers should treat it as a stop sign and come to a complete stop. They should remain stopped until it is safe to proceed, ensuring that they yield the right of way to other vehicles or pedestrians as necessary. Question 3. What is the purpose of a shoulder on the side of a roadway? A. To provide extra space for parking. B. To mark the boundary of a bicycle lane. C. To allow vehicles to stop or park temporarily. D. To provide a safe area for disabled vehicles or emergencies. The correct answer is D. To provide a safe area for disabled vehicles or emergencies. The purpose of a shoulder on the side of a roadway is to provide a safe area for disabled vehicles or emergencies. The shoulder is intended to be used for emergency stopping or parking when necessary, allowing vehicles to safely pull off the road and minimize traffic disruptions. Question 4. What does a solid white line on the road indicate? A. A passing zone on both sides. B. A no passing zone on both sides. C. A passing zone on the side with the solid line. D. A passing zone on the side with the broken line. The correct answer is B. A no passing zone on both sides. A solid white line on the road indicates a no passing zone on both sides. Drivers should not cross this line to overtake or pass other vehicles. The solid white line serves as a visual cue to remind drivers to maintain their lane and not attempt to pass. Question 5. What is the purpose of a car's turn signals? A. To activate the windshield wipers. B. To adjust the vehicle's mirrors. C. To communicate intended direction to other drivers. D. To control the vehicle's interior lighting. The correct answer is C. To communicate intended direction to other drivers. The purpose of a car's turn signals is to communicate the driver's intended direction to other drivers. By activating the turn signals, the driver signals their intention to turn left or right, providing a visual warning to other drivers so they can anticipate the vehicle's movement and adjust their own driving accordingly. Question 6. What does a yellow sign with a black arrow pointing to the right indicate? A. A sharp curve to the right ahead. B. A one-way street to the right. C. A detour or change in the traffic pattern to the right. D. An upcoming intersection where right turns are prohibited. The correct answer is C. A detour or change in the traffic pattern to the right. A yellow sign with a black arrow pointing to the right indicates a detour or change in the traffic pattern to the right. This sign alerts drivers to upcoming road construction, road closures, or temporary changes in the traffic flow, requiring them to follow the indicated path to the right. Question 7. What should you do when approaching a yellow traffic light? A. Speed up to beat the red light. B. Slow down and prepare to stop if it is safe to do so. C. Stop immediately regardless of other traffic. D. Maintain your speed and proceed through the intersection. The correct answer is B. Slow down and prepare to stop if it is safe to do so. When approaching a yellow traffic light, drivers should slow down and prepare to stop if it is safe to do so. The yellow light indicates that the signal is about to turn red, and drivers should exercise caution to either come to a stop or proceed through the intersection, depending on their proximity and ability to stop safely. Question 8. What is the purpose of a car's blind spot? A. 
to provide a clear view of the road ahead, b, to monitor traffic behind the vehicle, c, to store small personal items, d, to create a space for passengers. The correct answer is b, to monitor traffic behind the vehicle. A car's blind spot refers to the area around the vehicle that is not directly visible to the driver in the rear view mirror or side mirrors. The purpose of checking blind spots is to monitor traffic behind the vehicle before making a lane change or turning. It helps drivers identify vehicles that may be located in the areas not easily visible in the mirrors. Question 9. What does a blue sign with a white wheelchair symbol indicate? A. A designated parking area for persons with disabilities. B. An upcoming intersection with traffic signals. C. A pedestrian crosswalk ahead. D. A no parking zone. The correct answer is A. A designated parking area for persons with disabilities. A blue sign with a white wheelchair symbol indicates a designated parking area for persons with disabilities. These parking spaces are reserved to provide accessibility and convenience for individuals with disabilities, allowing them to park closer to their destinations and facilitate their mobility. Question 10. What should you do if your vehicle's headlights suddenly stop working at night? A. Continue driving without headlights until you reach your destination. B. Turn on the hazard lights and drive at a reduced speed. C. Pull off the road to a safe location and fix the problem if possible. D. Use high beams to compensate for the headlights. The correct answer is C. Pull off the road to a safe location and fix the problem if possible. If your vehicle's headlights suddenly stop working at night, it is crucial to prioritize safety. Pull off the road to a safe location, such as a parking lot or the side of the road, and turn on the hazard lights to alert other drivers. Attempt to diagnose and fix the problem if you are familiar with the vehicle's electrical system. Driving without headlights at night poses significant risks and is illegal in most jurisdictions. Question 11. What is the purpose of a white rectangular sign with black lettering indicating a maximum speed limit? A. To indicate the distance to the nearest rest area. B. To mark the boundary of a school zone. C. To provide directions to a nearby town or city. D. To specify the maximum speed allowed on the road. The correct answer is D. To specify the maximum speed allowed on the road. A white rectangular sign with black lettering indicating a maximum speed limit is used to inform drivers of the highest speed they are legally allowed to travel on that particular road. It is crucial for drivers to adhere to posted speed limits for their safety and the safety of others. Question 12. When should you use your vehicle's hazard lights? A. When driving in heavy traffic to indicate impatience. B. When parked illegally for a short period of time. C. When your vehicle is stopped or disabled on the roadway. D. When driving on a clear, open highway. The correct answer is C. When your vehicle is stopped or disabled on the roadway. Hazard lights, also known as emergency flashers, should be used when your vehicle is stopped or disabled on the roadway. By activating the hazard lights, you indicate to other drivers that there is a problem with your vehicle and they should exercise caution when approaching. Question 13. What should you do if you are driving and encounter a funeral procession with flashing purple lights? A. Proceed normally without any changes. B. Pass the procession quickly to avoid delays. C. Yield the right of way and show respect. D. Follow closely behind the last vehicle in the procession. The correct answer is C. Yield the right of way and show respect. When you encounter a funeral procession with flashing purple lights, it is important to yield the right of way and show respect. Funeral processions have the right of way at intersections, and drivers should allow them to proceed without interruption. It is courteous to maintain a respectful distance and not attempt to pass the procession. Question 14. What does a yellow diamond-shaped sign with a black cross symbolize? A. An upcoming hospital or medical facility. B. A pedestrian crossing zone. C. A railroad crossing ahead. D. A construction zone. The correct answer is C. A railroad crossing ahead. A yellow diamond-shaped sign with a black cross symbolizes a railroad crossing ahead. This sign alerts drivers to the presence of a railway crossing and serves as a warning to exercise caution, look for approaching trains, and be prepared to stop if necessary. Question 15. What should you do if you miss your intended exit on a highway? A. 
immediately stop on the shoulder and back up to the exit. B. Make a U-turn from the leftmost lane to return to the exit. C. Continue driving to the next available exit and find an alternative route. D. Slow down and make a sharp turn to reach the missed exit. The correct answer is C. Continue driving to the next available exit and find an alternative route. If you miss your intended exit on a highway, it is important to stay calm and continue driving to the next available exit. Attempting dangerous maneuvers such as stopping on the shoulder, making illegal U-turns, or making sharp turns can put yourself and others at risk. Once you have safely exited the highway, find an alternative route to reach your destination. Question 16. What does a solid yellow line alongside a broken yellow line on a roadway indicate? A. A passing zone on both sides. B. A no passing zone on both sides. C. A passing zone on the side with the solid line. D. A passing zone on the side with the broken line. The correct answer is B. A no passing zone on both sides. When there is a solid yellow line alongside a broken yellow line on a roadway, it indicates a no passing zone on both sides. Drivers are not permitted to pass other vehicles on either side of the road in this area. The solid yellow line indicates that passing is prohibited in both directions. Question 17. What should you do when approaching a school bus with its red lights flashing and a stop sign extended? A. Pass the school bus slowly and cautiously. B. Maintain your speed and proceed with caution. C. Stop and wait until the bus resumes motion and the stop sign is retracted. D. Honk your horn to alert the bus driver of your presence. The correct answer is C. Stop and wait until the bus resumes motion and the stop sign is retracted. When approaching a school bus with its red lights flashing and a stop sign extended, drivers must stop and wait until the bus resumes motion and the stop sign is retracted. This is to ensure the safety of children who may be crossing the road. Passing a school bus when it is stopped with its red lights flashing is illegal and highly dangerous. Question 18. What does a green traffic signal indicate? A. Stop and wait for further instructions. B. Proceed with caution. C. Slow down and prepare to stop. D. Proceed if it is safe to do so. The correct answer is D. Proceed if it is safe to do so. A green traffic signal indicates that drivers may proceed through the intersection if it is safe to do so. Green signals allow for the movement of traffic in the direction indicated by the signal. However, drivers should always exercise caution and yield to any pedestrians or vehicles that may still be within the intersection. Question 19. What should you do if you experience a tire blowout while driving? A. Immediately apply the brakes. B. Rapidly steer in the opposite direction of the blowout. C. Grip the steering wheel firmly and steer straight. D. Accelerate to regain control of the vehicle. The correct answer is C. Grip the steering wheel firmly and steer straight. If you experience a tire blowout while driving, it is important to remain calm and take appropriate action. Grip the steering wheel firmly with both hands and steer straight. Do not apply the brakes abruptly or make sudden steering movements. Once you have regained control of the vehicle, gradually decelerate and safely pull off the road to address the tire issue. Question 20. What is the purpose of a car's rearview mirror? A. To check blind spots before changing lanes. B. To monitor traffic approaching from behind. C. To adjust the vehicle's interior lighting. D. To provide a clear view of the road ahead. The correct answer is B. To monitor traffic approaching from behind. The purpose of a car's rearview mirror is to monitor traffic approaching from behind. By regularly checking the rearview mirror, drivers can gather important information about the vehicles behind them and make informed decisions such as when to change lanes or adjust their speed. It helps enhance overall situational awareness on the road. Question 21. What should you do if you encounter a flashing yellow traffic signal? A. Stop and wait for the signal to turn green. B. Proceed through the intersection with caution. C. Treat it as a stop sign and come to a complete stop. D. Speed up and clear the intersection quickly. The correct answer is B. Proceed through the intersection with caution. When encountering a flashing yellow traffic signal, drivers should proceed through the intersection with caution. A flashing yellow signal indicates that drivers should proceed with care, as they may need to yield to other vehicles or pedestrians. However, 
They do not need to come to a complete stop unless there is conflicting traffic or specific instructions at the intersection. Question 22. What should you do if your vehicle starts to skid on a slippery road? A. Brake hard to regain traction. B. Steer sharply in the opposite direction of the skid. C. Ease off the accelerator and steer in the direction you want to go. D. Slam on the brakes and come to a sudden stop. The correct answer is C. Ease off the accelerator and steer in the direction you want to go. If your vehicle starts to skid on a slippery road, it is important to remain calm and take appropriate action. Ease off the accelerator to reduce speed and regain control. Steer in the direction you want to go, gradually correcting the skid. Avoid sudden or jerky movements and do not brake hard or slam on the brakes as this can worsen the skid. Question 23. What does a round yellow sign with a black X symbol indicate? A. A construction zone. B. A school zone. C. A railroad crossing. D. A pedestrian crossing. The correct answer is A. A construction zone. A round yellow sign with a black X symbol indicates a construction zone. This sign warns drivers of construction activities ahead, including potential hazards such as lane closures, uneven surfaces, and reduced speed limits. Drivers should exercise caution, follow any posted instructions or detours, and be prepared for changes in traffic patterns. Question 24. What does it mean when a traffic signal displays a solid green arrow? A. Proceed in the direction of the arrow, yielding to other traffic. B. Prepare to come to a complete stop. C. The green light is about to change to yellow. D. Only turn in the direction of the arrow, yielding to other traffic. The correct answer is D. Only turn in the direction of the arrow, yielding to other traffic. When a traffic signal displays a solid green arrow, it means that drivers are allowed to turn in the direction indicated by the arrow. However, they must yield to other traffic, including pedestrians, that may still be in the intersection. The solid green arrow provides an exclusive right-of-way for turning vehicles. Question 25. What should you do if your vehicle's accelerator becomes stuck while driving? A. Apply the brakes repeatedly to dislodge the accelerator. B. Shift the vehicle into neutral or park. C. Turn off the ignition to shut down the engine. D. Use your foot to pull the accelerator pedal up. The correct answer is B. Shift the vehicle into neutral or park. If your vehicle's accelerator becomes stuck while driving, it is important to take immediate action to regain control. Shift the vehicle into neutral or park to disengage the transmission and prevent further acceleration. This will allow you to safely bring the vehicle to a stop. Avoid turning off the ignition abruptly, as it will disable power steering and braking systems, making it more difficult to control the vehicle. Question 26. What is the purpose of a white diamond-shaped sign with an orange center? A. To indicate a construction zone ahead. B. To mark a school zone. C. To warn of a pedestrian crossing. D. To designate a bicycle lane. The correct answer is A. To indicate a construction zone ahead, a white diamond-shaped sign with an orange center is used to indicate a construction zone ahead. These signs alert drivers to potential hazards and changes in traffic patterns due to road construction or maintenance activities. Drivers should exercise caution, reduce speed, and follow any posted instructions when passing through a construction zone. Question 27. When can you legally pass a vehicle on the right side? A. When the vehicle ahead is making a left turn and there is an available lane. B. When there is a paved shoulder to the right of the roadway. C. When you are driving on a one-way street with multiple lanes. D. When the vehicle ahead is driving below the posted speed limit. The correct answer is A. When the vehicle ahead is making a left turn and there is an available lane. You can legally pass a vehicle on the right side when the vehicle ahead is making a left turn and there is an available lane to pass. This maneuver is allowed to facilitate the flow of traffic, but it should be done with caution and only when it is safe to do so. Passing on the right in other situations, such as on the shoulder, or when the vehicle ahead is driving below the speed limit, is generally prohibited and unsafe. Question 28. What should you do if you miss your intended freeway exit? A. Back up on the shoulder to the missed exit. B. Make a U-turn from the nearest exit to go back. C. Continue to the next exit and find an alternate route. D. 
stop in the center lane and wait for traffic to clear? The correct answer is C. Continue to the next exit and find an alternate route. If you miss your intended freeway exit, it is best to continue to the next exit and find an alternate route. It is unsafe and usually prohibited to back up on the shoulder or make U-turns on the freeway. Exiting at the next available opportunity and finding an alternative route will ensure a safer and more efficient way to reach your destination. Question 29. What should you do when approaching a railroad crossing with flashing red lights and a lowered gate? A. Stop. Look for trains and wait until the gate is raised and lights stop flashing. B. Proceed with caution but do not stop unless a train is approaching. C. Slow down and prepare to stop but proceed if there are no trains in sight. D. Cross the railroad tracks quickly before the gate fully lowers. The correct answer is A. Stop, look for trains, and wait until the gate is raised and lights stop flashing. When approaching a railroad crossing with flashing red lights and a lowered gate, drivers must come to a complete stop, look for trains in both directions, and wait until the gate is raised and lights stop flashing. It is crucial to yield to the presence of trains and prioritize safety at railroad crossings. Question 30. What should you do if your vehicle begins to hydroplane on a wet road? A. Slam on the brakes to regain control of the vehicle. B. Accelerate to increase traction and stability. C. Steer sharply in the opposite direction of the skid. D. Ease off the accelerator and steer straight until regaining traction. The correct answer is D. Ease off the accelerator and steer straight until regaining traction. If your vehicle begins to hydroplane on a wet road, the best course of action is to ease off the accelerator and steer straight until regaining traction. Hydroplaning occurs when the tires lose contact with the road surface due to a layer of water between the tires and the road. Slamming on the brakes can cause the wheels to lock up and further lose control. Accelerating may exacerbate the problem. Steering sharply in the opposite direction of the skid can lead to a loss of control. By easing off the accelerator and maintaining a steady straight course, you allow the tires to regain contact with the road and regain control of the vehicle. Question 31. When should you use your headlights while driving? A. Only during nighttime or in low light conditions. B. Only when it is raining or foggy. C. At all times to improve visibility. D. Never during daylight hours. The correct answer is C. At all times to improve visibility. You should use your headlights at all times to improve visibility regardless of the time of day. Headlights help you see the road ahead and make your vehicle more visible to other drivers, especially in adverse weather conditions or during dawn and dusk when visibility is reduced. Question 32. What is the purpose of an HOV lane? A. To provide a lane for oversized vehicles. B. To allow vehicles to make U-turns. C. To designate a lane for high-occupancy vehicles. D to separate regular traffic from commercial vehicles? The correct answer is C, to designate a lane for high occupancy vehicles. The purpose of an HOV, high occupancy vehicle lane, is to designate a lane specifically for vehicles with multiple occupants. This lane is intended to encourage carpooling and reduce traffic congestion by providing a faster and more efficient route for vehicles carrying more than one person. Question 33. What does a red circle with a white horizontal line across the middle indicate? A. A yield sign. B. A stop sign. C. A speed limit sign. D. A no entry sign. The correct answer is D. A no entry sign. A red circle with a white horizontal line across the middle indicates a no entry sign. This sign prohibits drivers from entering a particular road or area. It is used to indicate one-way streets, restricted access zones, or areas where vehicles are not allowed. Question 34. When are you required to use your turn signals while driving? A. Only when making right turns. B. Only when making left turns. C. Only when changing lanes. D. Whenever turning or changing lanes. The correct answer is D. Whenever turning or changing lanes. You are required to use your turn signals whenever turning or changing lanes. Signaling your intentions by using your turn signals is essential for communicating with other drivers and pedestrians on the road, allowing them to anticipate your actions and ensure safe maneuvering. Question 35. What should you do if you are involved in a collision? A. Quickly leave the scene to avoid traffic congestion. B. 
Exchange insurance information with the other drivers involved. C. Admit fault and apologize to the other driver. D. Call emergency services and report the incident. The correct answer is D. Call emergency services and report the incident. If you are involved in a collision, it is important to prioritize safety and follow the necessary steps. First, ensure the well-being of yourself and others involved. Then, call emergency services to report the incident and request any necessary medical assistance. It is crucial to exchange insurance information with the other driver as involved, but admitting fault or apologizing may have legal implications, so it is generally advised to avoid making such statements at the scene. Question 36. What does a yellow sign with a pedestrian symbol indicate? A. A crosswalk for pedestrians ahead. B. A pedestrian-only zone. C. A pedestrian crossing with a traffic signal. D. A warning of potential pedestrian activity. The correct answer is D. A warning of potential pedestrian activity. A yellow sign with a pedestrian symbol indicates a warning of potential pedestrian activity. This sign is used to alert drivers to the presence of pedestrians in the area or to indicate locations where pedestrians may be crossing the road. Drivers should be cautious and prepared to yield to pedestrians when they encounter this sign. Question 37. What does a solid white line on the roadway indicate? A. A passing zone. B. A no passing zone. C. A designated turn lane. D. A shared lane for bicycles and vehicles. The correct answer is B. A no passing zone. A solid white line on the roadway indicates a no passing zone. Drivers are not permitted to cross this line to overtake or pass other vehicles. It signifies that passing is prohibited and should be adhered to for safety reasons. Question 38. What should you do if your vehicle's headlights suddenly fail while driving at night? A. Slow down and continue driving with caution. B. Turn on the hazard lights and pull off the road. C. Use the high beam headlights as a temporary solution. D. Signal your intentions and proceed to the nearest service station. The correct answer is B. Turn on the hazard lights and pull off the road. If your vehicle's headlights suddenly fail while driving at night, you should turn on the hazard lights, also known as emergency flashers, and safely pull off the road to a secure location. This will alert other drivers to your situation and help prevent accidents. It is important to resolve the headlight issue before continuing to drive. Question 39. What does it mean when a traffic signal displays a solid yellow arrow? A. Yield to oncoming traffic and proceed with caution. B. Prepare to come to a complete stop. C. The green arrow is about to appear. D. Make a U-turn if it is safe to do so. The correct answer is A. Yield to oncoming traffic and proceed with caution. When a traffic signal displays a solid yellow arrow, it means you should yield to oncoming traffic and proceed with caution. The solid yellow arrow indicates that the protected turning time is ending and you should prepare to stop or yield the right of way to other vehicles, pedestrians, or cyclists in the intersection before making your turn. Question 40. What should you do if you miss an exit on a highway? A. Stop and back up to the missed exit. B. Make a U-turn on the highway to go back. C. Continue to the next exit and find an alternate route. D. Exit at the next opportunity and re-enter the highway in the opposite direction. The correct answer is C. Continue to the next exit and find an alternate route. If you miss an exit on a highway, you should continue to the next exit and find an alternate route. It is not safe or legal to stop, back up, or make a U-turn on the highway. Exiting at the next opportunity and finding an alternative route will allow you to safely and efficiently reach your intended destination. Question 41. What does a solid yellow line on a two-lane roadway indicate? A. No passing in either direction. B. Passing is allowed in both directions. C. Passing is allowed only in the direction of the line. D. Passing is allowed only on the right side. The correct answer is A. No passing in either direction. A solid yellow line on a two-lane roadway indicates that passing is not allowed in either direction. Drivers should not cross the solid yellow line to overtake or pass other vehicles. The line serves as a visual separation to enhance safety and prevent head-on collisions. Question 42. When should you use your emergency or hazard lights while driving? A when driving in heavy traffic, B, when you need to warn other drivers of a hazard, C, 
when it is raining or foggy. D. When you need to park illegally for a short time. The correct answer is B. When you need to warn other drivers of a hazard. You should use your emergency or hazard lights when you need to warn other drivers of a hazard on the road. This could include a disabled vehicle, an accident, or any situation that may pose a risk to other drivers. Emergency lights should not be used in non-emergency situations or to park illegally. Question 43. What is the purpose of rumble strips on the edge of a roadway? A. To alert drivers when they are drifting off the road. B. To indicate the presence of a pedestrian crossing. C. To provide a tactile warning for upcoming stop signs. D. To mark the boundary between lanes. The correct answer is A. To alert drivers when they are drifting off the road. Rumble strips are placed on the edge of roadways to alert drivers when they are drifting off the road. These strips produce a vibration and noise when vehicles drive over them, serving as a tactile warning to drivers who may be drowsy, distracted, or inadvertently leaving their lane. Rumble strips help prevent accidents by prompting drivers to correct their course and stay within the designated lanes. Question 44. What should you do when approaching a steady yellow traffic signal? A. Speed up and try to clear the intersection quickly. B. Stop immediately before entering the intersection. C. Proceed through the intersection with caution. D. Come to a complete stop and wait for the signal to turn green. The correct answer is C. Proceed through the intersection with caution. When approaching a steady yellow traffic signal, drivers should proceed through the intersection with caution. A yellow signal indicates that the signal is about to change to red and drivers should prepare to stop. However, if it is unsafe to stop suddenly, such as when already in the intersection or close to it, drivers should continue through the intersection cautiously rather than abruptly stopping and risking a rear-end collision. Question 45. What should you do if you are being tailgated by another vehicle? A. Increase your speed to create more distance. B. Break suddenly to discourage tailgating. C. Slow down gradually and allow the vehicle to pass. D. Change lanes frequently to prevent tailgating. The correct answer is C. Slow down gradually and allow the vehicle to pass. If you are being tailgated by another vehicle, it is recommended to slow down gradually and allow the vehicle to pass. This action helps create a safer distance between your vehicle and the tailgating vehicle. Changing lanes frequently or engaging in aggressive driving maneuvers can escalate the situation and increase the risk of a collision. Question 46. When should you use your high beam headlights? A. When driving in urban areas with streetlights. B. When following another vehicle closely. C. When driving in fog, rain, or snow. D. When approaching oncoming traffic. The correct answer is C. When driving in fog, rain, or snow. High beam headlights should be used when driving in fog, rain, or snow to improve visibility. However, it is important to switch to low beam headlights when approaching oncoming traffic or when following another vehicle closely to avoid blinding the other drivers. Question 47. What is the purpose of an acceleration lane on a highway? A. To provide a lane for exiting the highway. B. To provide a lane for slowing down before entering the highway. C to provide a lane for vehicles to increase speed and merge onto the highway. D, to provide a lane for emergency vehicles only. The correct answer is C, to provide a lane for vehicles to increase speed and merge onto the highway. The purpose of an acceleration lane on a highway is to provide a dedicated lane for vehicles to increase speed and safely merge onto the highway. Drivers should use the acceleration lane to match the speed of the traffic and smoothly merge into the appropriate lane when it is safe to do so. Question 48. What should you do if your vehicle's tire blows out while driving? A. Apply the brakes firmly and come to a stop on the side of the road. B. Accelerate to maintain control of the vehicle. C. Steer firmly in the opposite direction of the blowout. D. Ease off the accelerator and maintain a firm grip on the steering wheel. The correct answer is D. Ease off the accelerator and maintain a firm grip on the steering wheel. If your vehicle's tire blows out while driving, you should ease off the accelerator, maintain a firm grip on the steering wheel, and gradually steer the vehicle in the direction you want to go. Avoid sudden braking or steering maneuvers that could cause a loss of control. 
Once you have regained control, safely move to the side of the road and come to a stop. Question 49. What is the meaning of a solid red traffic signal? A. Stop and remain stopped until the signal changes. B. Proceed with caution and be prepared to stop. C. Slow down and proceed with caution. D. Stop only if there is cross traffic. The correct answer is A. Stop and remain stopped until the signal changes. A solid red traffic signal means you must come to a complete stop behind the stop line or before the intersection and remain stopped until the signal changes to green. It is important to obey traffic signals to ensure the safety of all road users. Question 50. What is the purpose of a crosswalk? A. To mark the boundary between two lanes. B. To designate an area for pedestrians to cross the road. C. To indicate the location of a school zone. D. To provide a designated lane for bicycles. The correct answer is B. To designate an area for pedestrians to cross the road. The purpose of a crosswalk is to designate a specific area for pedestrians to safely cross the road. Drivers should yield to pedestrians within the crosswalk and be prepared to stop to ensure their safety. Crosswalks are marked with lines on the road and may be accompanied by additional signage or traffic control devices to enhance visibility. Question 51. What is the legal blood alcohol concentration BAC limit for drivers in most states? A. 0.05%. B. 0.08%. C. 0.10%. D. 0.15%. The correct answer is B. 0.08%. In most states, the legal blood alcohol concentration, BAC, limit for drivers is 0.08%. This means that if a driver's back level is 0.08% or higher, it is considered illegal to operate a motor vehicle. Question 52. What does a circular green traffic signal indicate? A. Stop and remain stopped. B. Proceed with caution. C. Prepare to come to a complete stop. D. Yield to oncoming traffic. The correct answer is B. Proceed with caution. A circular green traffic signal indicates that you can proceed with caution. It means that the traffic signal is allowing you to go, but you should still be aware of other vehicles, pedestrians, and potential hazards before proceeding. Question 53. What should you do if you encounter a school bus stopped with its red lights flashing and stop arm extended? A. Stop and wait until the lights stop flashing and the stop arm is retracted. B. Slow down and proceed with caution. C. Pass the bus if there is no oncoming traffic. D. Honk to alert the bus driver and proceed. The correct answer is A. Stop and wait until the lights stop flashing and the stop arm is retracted. If you encounter a school bus stopped with its red lights flashing and stop arm extended, you must stop and wait until the lights stop flashing and the stop arm is retracted. This is to ensure the safety of children who may be getting on or off the bus or crossing the road. Question 54. When should you yield the right of way to pedestrians? A. Only at marked crosswalks. B. Only when pedestrians are using a designated pedestrian walkway. C. At all times, regardless of the location or situation. D. Only when pedestrians are in a school zone. The correct answer is C. At all times, regardless of the location or situation, you should yield the right of way to pedestrians at all times regardless of the location or situation. It is important to be attentive and respectful towards pedestrians, whether they are using marked crosswalks, designated pedestrian walkways, or even crossing the road at locations without designated crossings. Question 55. What is the purpose of a traffic signal with a flashing yellow arrow? A. To indicate a protected left turn. B. To indicate a pedestrian crossing. C. To indicate a stop sign ahead. D to indicate a railroad crossing? The correct answer is A. To indicate a protected left turn, a traffic signal with a flashing yellow arrow indicates a protected left turn. It means that you may proceed with caution and make a left turn, yielding to oncoming traffic and pedestrians. The flashing yellow arrow indicates that you have permission to make the left turn, but must first yield to any conflicting traffic. Question 56. When approaching a railroad crossing with flashing red lights and a lowered gate, what should you do? A. Stop and wait until the lights stop flashing and the gate is raised. B. Slow down and proceed with caution if there is no train approaching. C. 
Treat it as a yield sign and proceed if there is no oncoming traffic. D. Speed up to clear the crossing quickly. The correct answer is A. Stop and wait until the lights stop flashing and the gate is raised. When approaching a railroad crossing with flashing red lights and a lowered gate, you must stop and wait until the lights stop flashing and the gate is raised. It is important to obey these signals to ensure your safety and prevent collisions with trains. Question 57. What does a white rectangular sign with black lettering indicate? A. Regulatory information or instructions. B. Warning of potential hazards or dangers. C. Route guidance or directions. D. Information about services or facilities ahead. The correct answer is A. Regulatory information or instructions. A white rectangular sign with black lettering typically indicates regulatory information or instructions. These signs provide specific rules, regulations, or instructions that drivers must follow. They often convey information about speed limits, parking restrictions, lane usage, or other regulatory matters. Question 58. What does a red triangle-shaped sign with a white border indicate? A. School zone ahead. B. Stop sign ahead. C. Yield right of way. D. No passing zone. The correct answer is C. Yield right of way. A red triangle-shaped sign with a white border indicates that you must yield the right of way to other vehicles or pedestrians. It is typically used at intersections or other locations where you need to give priority to other traffic or allow pedestrians to cross safely. Question 59. What does it mean if a traffic signal is completely out or not functioning? A. Treat it as a four-way stop intersection. B. Treat it as a green light and proceed with caution. C. Treat it as a yield sign and proceed if there is no oncoming traffic. D. Treat it as a stop sign and come to a complete stop. The correct answer is A. Treat it as a four-way stop intersection. If a traffic signal is completely out or not functioning, you should treat it as a four-way stop intersection. All approaching vehicles must come to a complete stop, and the right-of-way should be yielded to the vehicle that arrived first. Proceed with caution only when it is safe to do so. Question 60. What should you do if you witness a collision or encounter a hazardous situation on the road? A. Call emergency services and provide them with the necessary information. B. Take pictures or videos of the scene for evidence. C. Stop and offer assistance to the injured individuals. D. Safely move your vehicle away from the incident and continue driving. The correct answer is A. Call emergency services and provide them with the necessary information. If you witness a collision or encounter a hazardous situation on the road, your first priority should be to ensure your safety and the safety of others. Call emergency services, such as 911, to report the incident and provide them with the necessary information, including the location, description of the situation, and any details you can provide. It is important to let the professionals handle the situation while you remain a safe distance away from any potential danger. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you still need more practice, then check out these videos or click the first link in the description to get your cheat sheet, which will help you pass your DMV exam on your first try.